My dad is actually a photographer. So growing up, like, we used to do um, different shoots with him. Like, he went to school. When we came to Canada, uh, he went back to school for photography. So we did, uh, like, so he had projects that he had to shoot. So me and my sister would be his models. <laughs> and I remember, like, just random setups. There's, like, one shoot that we did at Mohawk Park with umbrellas. <laughs> like, just random things. And then eventually he opened up his business and he started doing weddings. And I started um, going with him. And it just, like, at first it was just something fun that I like to do. And then, like, I never actually thought that that would be something, like, I'd do for for myself. <laughs> and then it just, like, evolved. And, like, the more I did it, like, the more I started doing it. And then um, I started traveling a lot. And I, like, used a point-and-shoot camera. And then I, I, like, I grew out of the point-and-shoot camera. So my dad gave me his, like, DSLR. And then I started using that more. And then I started learning more and just practicing and practicing. The only reason I started learning uh, photography was uh, some random guy like stopped me. I was on the seawall in Vancouver and some random guy just stopped me. He's like, what's your aperture? And I looked down and I see like uh, uh, the only number I saw was 300. So I said 300. <laughs> He's like, now I know it could never be that. But like now I'm like, oh, because that was like the number of pictures I had left. <laughs> and I had no idea. So like as soon as he asked me that, I'm like, maybe I should figure this out if I want to do photography. <laughs> so it was like a nice like eye opener to learn. <laughs> So where did you get training for it? From um, your dad or did you get... Well, I, I did some with my dad. And then um, I did like... I basically did YouTube tutorials. <laughs> and then I did... I did do some courses at Mohawk where I was at school. I went to school for a television. So like it kind of worked with it. But like the most training that I'm getting is right now. It's um, on Creative Live. And it's this online site where you can... Uh, train like uh, they have like the best of the best for like photographers videographers graphic designers and you can just tune in and listen to these like best of the best tell all their secrets so like I find like the most I've learned is just from watching that when you just started as a young artist learning stuff and picking up different things did you find Brantford was supportive of that like what type of well, opportunities? when I started I didn't start in Brantford I started in Vancouver and that's a lot easier because Vancouver is such an artistic place and everything's like so, um, like, there's so many jobs, there's so many artists out there, it's so easy to hook up with the actors and do headshots and stuff. And then when I moved to Brantford, though, um, I went back to school. So I started shooting in events and stuff. And I found just for, like, as soon as I did come to Brantford, like, I was already getting, like, developed a little bit more. But everybody was very supportive. They, like, they... Well, Obviously, I shot events for free, <laughs> so they were happy about it. But then, like, people started noticing the, my pictures and, like, sharing them, and I started getting more and more popular. So I found, like, for a small city for, like, art, it's very supportive, and there's lots of, like, different ways to get your work out. Except it's just hard, like, you start and you do all this free work, and then everyone, like, thinks you're going to do more free work. So you got to, like, really separate yourself. It's like, no, I'm done that. <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite thing to shoot, whether that's wedding or travel photos or travel? <laughs> yes, my favorite thing, definitely my favorite thing to shoot is like my favorite, like my favorite day is going like being anywhere that I don't know and just getting lost with my camera. So like walking around, and just taking pictures of the place, the people, kind of like sneaking on me, <laughs> speaking like looking at people and just like capturing what's there. I like getting lost and just like capturing images and places I don't know and I've learned so many places just from like I make like a central point and then I walk out one direction and I walk back and then walk out the other direction then I start like linking it all together and it's easier when you're in a foreign country because you can't really read the road signs or do anything so it's a good way to like learn the area too. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite location in Brantford that you like to shoot? In Brantford? I, I, I just like being on the trails so like anything outside. I do a lot of fall things um, at uh at Mohawk Park, but I just got um, a contract with Glenhurst Art Gallery, so I can see that becoming my new favorite place because they gave me like a little studio studio to use and like I'm partnering up with them, so like it'll be an interesting way to like explore that area too because I, I've shot there a lot and a lot of weddings are there and like it's a very popular shooting spot, so it's nice that we can make, be, I'm going to be able to make that like home base kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so you guys are married, and I just want to know what it's like working with your best friends side by side. Because that's awesome. Yeah. So is that rewarding, or...? Talk about the first wedding we ever shot together before we were married. 
<laughs> talk about that. <laughs> So three years ago, a couple of our friends were getting married. We didn't have our business. We were only dating at the time. And they had separately asked both of us to shoot the wedding. And we didn't really realize because we were not live. I was in Canada at the time. Anyway, there was some confusion. Long story short, we both showed up at the wedding. And we think that we're each the head honcho, like the lead photographer. And so all day we were super annoyed with each other because I was trying to take charge. And he kept butting it. And then he was trying to take charge, and I was, like, being so strong and being so rude. And it was really frustrating, and now we laugh about it mm-hmm. because it's hilarious. But after that, every wedding has been, or anything we shoot really, has been pretty straightforward. We just kind of decide ahead of time, like, all right, you're taking her today. I think one to first. just on a marriage note, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you love your wife or husband and they're your best friend, then you should be happy to work with them every day, even though sometimes, sometimes you have to separate work and married life which we sometimes have to do that, but otherwise it's like 99% amazing. Yeah, I never knew if I could be the kind of person who would work with their spouse. I thought, hmm, I wonder if I'll get tired of them, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't see him for a long time, if we're like working separately for the day, I'm like, oh, I miss you. And he's like, it's okay. It's been 20 hours, 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever find it challenging, though? So, for example, critiquing each other's work. Is that awkward for you, too? Or is it like, hey, maybe that photo isn't the best? Or I think I think sometimes, no offense to the ladies, they get emotional about stuff. And I say things in, in a way that <laughs> I would want to hear it, but then Lane doesn't like it when I say that. Right, so he treats me as a co-worker. And I'm like, but I'm always your wife. Mm-hmm. And I d- yes. So, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, do you guys have a shoot that was especially meaningful to you or something that was really special or maybe a client that was special that you got to work with? I should have prepared for these answers. I had to think about that for a sec. No, take your time. Um, Here specifically in Brantford or just in life? No, just something that really impacted you. It meant something more to you than just the typical photo shoot. Yeah. Um. Well, okay. So... Not to say that these pictures are the best pictures we've ever taken, but we work with a organization called the uh, Arthritis Research Foundation in Toronto. We shoot all their events, and so it's um, to raise money for arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis and a bunch of other stuff. So we do those events every year, and that's always amazing to be a part of that because it's like helping out. And plus, one of our good friends, Jim, who you interviewed, his wife has arthritis, and she suffers like it's like crazy, crazy. And so it's good to know that we're helping towards something like that. I mean, the pictures are just event pictures usually, so they're not like our best portfolio shots usually, but the actual event and everything is good. You? Also, well, there was a wedding that John cried at because he had seen the bride literally grow up her whole life, and so I've never seen him so affected at a wedding, and it was really sweet. That was her dad's speech. (laughs) Her dad's speech was really sweet. Also, when I was in university studying photography, I did a story on two nuns who were biological sisters and so they were 98 and 101 and their names were sister agnes catherine and sister joseph marie and they were just so sweet and so precious and just spending time with them was slow like literally in a 24-hour period i would read a whole book because their life is just sitting (laughs) so we would talk anyway just spending time with them and i kept going back for years afterwards until they're both since passed but yeah, being a small part of a little piece of their story you may be able to capture it was so special mm-hmm. for me. So, mm-hmm. um, What would you say is the hardest thing about being a photographer or a videographer? And maybe that's something that people don't realize, like people who don't know how to use a camera. What do you think the hardest part is or something that you would like those people to know? Are you talking business or are you talking <laughs> creativity? I mean, for both sides of it would be <laughs> an interesting perspective. Well, business-wise, it's an oversaturated market, so it's challenging to find work sometimes. So we we tend to, um, even though we do a lot of work within Brantford, we travel a lot and do a lot of work overseas or other places just because we need to. Um, but creatively, creatively, creatively wise, what's that saying, uh, Picasso, about artists stealing or something? Get artist, copy, create artist, steal. Not that I steal, but I always look at a lot of pictures because sometimes I go into a photo shoot and I don't want to do the exact same thing every time. I want to do something different. 
so I look at other people's work just to get inspiration. So that's that's the biggest challenge for me is to like keep fresh and keep and don't just do the same thing over and over again, which some people love, but I'd rather just do more unique things for each photo shoot. Yeah, I would like a second thought. Just if you're in a similar type of situation, it's really hard not to take the same pictures. But if you're in the same situation a hundred times, like weddings have a lot of the same moments and just trying to take those and capture them really well but also like take our photography to the next level of creativity and stuff has been and we personally do try to challenge ourselves to always grow always get better take it to the next level Mm -hmm. so 